you know, you brought up um, a good hunting partner and, and how that can affect stuff. And, you know, it's funny. Um, I love the solo stuff, but I also love to hunt with buddies. And I'm very fortunate. I mean, I've I've gotten to be really close and I hunt a lot with just some killers. I mean, um, you know, Devin Leonard comes to mind. I mean, I don't know anybody that's got a, a mule deer resume like that guy. He's got five over, not 200, not 220, but he's got five over 225 gross with a bow on public. Um, and I've got to be a part of some of those and learn from that guy. But what's great is he's this mule deer wizard, but we have so much fun. I mean, we we... We are messing around with each other 24-7. You know, I mean, if he's glassing (laughs) on one side of of a ridgeline and I'm on the other, I'm the guy that if my side's dead, nothing's happening, I'm going to grab that pine cone and toss it up and over and try to hit him in the back of the head while he's on a spotter, knowing that it's going to bang his head into the spotter, potentially like it's, you know, it's going to startle him. And we both laugh and he'll flip me off. And then it's, it's, you know, we banter back and forth. I mean, I remember one time in a rainstorm, I unzipped part of his tent before the storm hit, knowing it was going to drip down. I mean, like, <laughs> but, but it, it keeps it light, you know, it keeps it fun. Like, um, he's a great example. I mean, I couldn't ask for, I mean, him and I has been on some grinder hunts. I mean, oh, we, we've been on some just... I remember a hunt in Utah one time we packed into this spot. I got off the plane at 11 o'clock. Uh, it's a wonder I didn't get altitude sickness and die. Got off a plane at 11 at night at 1230. So an hour and a half later, him and I were hiking in. Got off a plane, put my boots on, got my pack loaded. Up the mountain we went. Slammed an energy drink and up the mountain we went. We hiked all through the night. We get to our glassing point. Right at first daylight. I mean, right at first daylight. We're glassing, glassing, glassing. Okay, we're we're not finding what we're seeing. Took like an hour nap. And then we said, okay, we're going to make this big push up and over this pass. Get to this next spot by dark. Get camp set up in glass. And uh, super hot. It's like 105 that day. Well, where we think we're going to have water, there's actually no water. So now... We're out of water. We got like three more miles to go. We're both looking at each other and we're just like, man, like we're in a really tough spot, you know? And Devin's like, yeah, it could be worse though. He's like, I mean, we could be fighting rattlesnakes or whatever. And up there's not typically really bad in Utah for that. Like I hunt there a lot and I don't really run into it. In the next mile stretch, we both threw our bows on top of rattlesnakes three times. And I'm like, you idiot. Why would you say that? Like, why would you jinx us with that? We've never run into rattlesnakes. <laughs> he, got, he had one lunge up at him and he tossed his bow and it come up, tried to come up through the arrow quiver, but the, the arrows caught him. And, and as he was coming up through the arrows, it took him back down to the ground. I mean, just stuff like that, that now we laugh about, but like without a good hunting partner, those moments would just deteriorate the whole deal. Whereas we sit back and we're laughing about it. Like, we're just like, Oh my gosh, it's like we're in this video game where we're, we're hiking down the trail and we got to dodge rattlesnakes and we have no water. And it's like, we, we got to get to like the golden circle over there where we know water's at this pond. So we finally get to the pond. And then that (laughs) night, this huge storm rolls through and me being me, I unzip the top corner of his tent. So he's over there. He's like, this freaking piece of shit. And I'm like, what's wrong? He's like, freaking water's blowing in on me. I'm like, you got that thing zipped all the way? He's like, I, well, yeah, I zipped it up and he looks up and there's like a three inch crack and he's like, you freaking bastard. And I'm over there dying laughing because like, I know where the water's coming in. And like, but long story short, like we keep it fun and light and man, like, you know, when he goes on a stock, nobody on that mountain's rooting harder for him than me. When I go on a stock, nobody is rooting harder for me than him. Like, like we're just, we are so pumped to see the other guy get to go make a play and get to go on a stock. And like, you know, he's been with me when I've killed. I've been with him when he, whenever he's killed. And we just lose our minds. I mean, just absolutely lose our minds because we both know how hard we want the other one to succeed. And like, I've always said, you know, you want to be the hunting partner that people want to hunt with. If nobody ever wanted, like, I've been lucky. 
I get asked to go on hunts all the time. You know, me and Kurt's best friends for his dad's memorial hunt, super, super important hunt to Kurt, his first mule deer hunt. He asked me and Devin to go. Like, that was one of the more prouder moments of my life for him to be like, man, this is going to be a super emotional hunt. It was over his dad's birthday. Um, first hunt since his dad had passed away. All these things playing into it. And he's like, dude, I really want you there. Like, I want you and Devin there. Like, it gives me goosebumps just talking about it because I know how much that hunt meant to him. And then for me to watch him kill a buck, like I'm watching through the spotter. He kills this buck in Wyoming in the back country. Like, and it's me, him, and Devin, and we're in this moment. Like, I'll never forget just being like, man, like, what if I sucked as a hunting partner? And that is why I didn't get to be here and experience this. And he kills the buck. And we're packing the buck out in this rainstorm and it's hailing. And then it goes to complete clear skies and stars just out of nowhere. We look at our watches. It's 1201, the day of his dad's birthday. It was like, literally like he kills the buck. The storm hits. We're like, oh my God, this is crazy. We're taking cover. We got our packs over our heads. It's like two inch hail. We're getting beat on. And all of a sudden it just, I look up and I'm like, do you see the stars? And Devin's like, what the? And it's like, it just all clears out. And we're like, like, that's just not how it happens out there. You know, we're at 12,000 feet in Wyoming. Like typically it doesn't just that quickly. It's, it's total shit. And then it's like gone. Like the storm might stop, but now all of a sudden the stars are out and we're like, that's weird. Kurt's like, dude, look at your watch. And we look at our watch and it's literally like 1201. Like now we're, we're packing this buck out and it's, it's Papa Dave's birthday. Like, I just remember thinking to myself, like, man, if I sucked as like a partner, a hunting partner and like a best friend, I never would get to be in this moment. So it's like, I always like say like, man, you want to be the guy that people are like, I want to hunt with that guy. Like you want to be that guy. Like, man, I want you to be on this hunt with me. It means a lot because that means you're motivating and you're fun and you're positive and like, that's the guy you want to be. You don't want to be the jealous asshole that's constantly pessimistic and negative. And like, there's a reason why some guys, no one wants to hunt with them. And it's like, man, that would just be so miserable to be that guy. Like that, that would just, that'd be awful. Cause you'd miss out on so many cool moments and opportunities. And it's like, I think about that a lot. Like, you know, the times I've been with Devin and, and Kurt and just different people, Brian Barney, you know, and I'm just like, man, what if I sucked as like a person and a friend and a, a hunting partner? Like, look at all the things I'd have missed. Like, and I don't know, it's just, it's, 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 it's good to think like that because it really keeps you in check. Like if, if you weren't a positive person, look at all the opportunities you'd miss. And that's not just hunting, that's in life and business and relationships and being a parent, you know, across the board, if you suck when it comes to people wanting to be around you, like you're going to miss out on a lot. Uh, so I'm glad you brought that up about the hunting partner, man. Cause I, I think sometimes we take for granted how important a good hunting partner or even just a best friend in life, um, really is. I've always said, if I died and said I had a couple true best friends, like I got killed tomorrow, but I can say, you know what, throughout life, I had a couple what I would consider best friends, I was a very, very wealthy man. Like that, that is hard to find in today's world. A one or two really, really true best friends that want you to succeed, want to see the best. They're able to motivate you. They're able to give you brutal honesty. Like all these things. If you can say you ended your days and you had a couple of those, in my opinion, man, you did pretty freaking good in life. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that... That's that's such a powerful statement there because like even think about and and one thing that you added there at the end that I think is an important part about it like saying you're a good hunting partner by saying oh I want somebody you know my hunting partner to to kill this deer this elk right that's one thing but actually really doing the things to help you know put put them first almost yep. you know obviously yep. you want to fill your own tag and that's important but when you're helping other people, you kind of get that reciprocated oh, yeah. over time. You know, things things will fall into your lap in ways that at least this is the way I the way I look at it. 